This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome to Covered in Pet Hair, a boozy web show for pet lovers on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Isabel alvarez Arada, and today I have the pleasure of having a drink and a chat with a husband-wife team of pet retail industry entrepreneurs. I'll tell you all about them and introduce you as soon as we come back from these messages from our sponsors. Molly, here's your dinner. <laughs> Zeus, that's not your food. Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a 6-inch tray for large bowls and a 4-inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your Cat Tree Tray today. Go right now to CatTreeTray.com. That's CatTreeTray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel alvarez Arada, and today I have the pleasure of having a drink and a chat with pet parents, entrepreneurs, cat and dog people, craft beer aficionados, coffee lovers, travel buffs, visionaries who are originally from Iowa and currently live in the western suburbs of Chicago. They are parents to humans by the names of Grace and Rex, Boston Terriers by the names of Beamer and Sassy, and two cats who they call Beast and Disco. They are the owners of Two Bostons, the store for happy pets in the Chicago area. Adrienne and Andy Tassine. Welcome, Adrienne and Andy. It's so good to have you on the show. Cheers. Cheers. I'm so happy to have you. You guys are going to give me all your secrets, and I can't wait. Awesome. We're looking forward to it. Well, I have not yet interviewed anybody who owns retail shops. And in owning retail shops, I know that you work directly with pet food manufacturers and pet toy manufacturers and leash manufacturers. So you know what's good, what's bad, what's ugly. And I'm going to get into all of that stuff. But before we do that, anybody participating in our drinking game today, anytime you hear this word. The secret word is perfect. Make sure you take a drink of whatever you're enjoying, but you better be 21 and over in the U.S. to partake. Please never drink and drive and always drink responsibly. What are you guys drinking tonight? So I have got a fuzzy dog here with a little bit of peach schnapps in it. So super tasty. Ooh. And I am going with just a classic old fashioned. So, Ooh, oh, I love an old fashioned. So I'm having, I guess, an exploratory drink. It's, it's a discovery drink. It is a, wait for it, tomato martini. Oh, interesting. (laughs) The jury is still out. It's got tomato infused vodka, dry vermouth, and white wine vinegar. Mm. I will let you enjoy that. (laughs) (laughs) Put a tahini rim on it, which is that chili lime stuff, so that maybe I could add a little oomph to it. I mean, it's it's drinkable, but I'm definitely not going to be finished by the time we wrap up the show. So cheers to you guys for being here. Enjoy your drinks, and I'll cheers. try on mine. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Okay, interesting. Mm. I don't really know if I'm going to take any more drinks of that. All right, I always introduce this show with a game. Okay. And I'm excited to play this game with you all because I feel like this is going to tell me exactly what I need to know about your stores because I'm very picky. Okay. about the businesses that I support as far as pet products. Because sure. if they do things or sell things that are hurtful to animals, I kind of tend to shy away from purchasing there again. As you should. Yeah, exactly. And this game I call Cheers or Fears. 
Okay. okay. So I want you to tell me if I was a pet parent and I told you that I purchased these things, would you say cheers? That's a great purchase. Or would you be like, oh, be careful with that because there might be something that you have not considered? Well, gotcha. and I, of course, I have my caveats before we even begin yeah. because we don't carry anything in our own stores that we wouldn't feel comfortable giving or using on our own pets. Yes, that is our guarantee. We also believe that our customers are always doing things in the best interest of their pets. And so if they are doing something that we may feel there could be an improvement or something on, the goal is not to make anyone feel bad about it, it's to educate about what they could be doing better. 100%. And I think something that is always a recurring theme in this show is that pet parents don't know what they don't know. So they count on people like you all at your shops to make sure that they know what's good and why you maybe don't carry something if somebody comes in looking for something and you say, oh, we don't carry it because, do you do that? Yes, exactly. Like Andy said, we never ever want someone to feel badly about it, but we are, we are in the business of educating and making sure that people feel very confident about what they're doing for their pets. For so, sure. And we also say no one knowingly yeah. would feed a food that could have an improvement on it or feeds a treat that is potentially unsafe. Mm -hmm. They just don't know. And so right. that is our job to educate. And I think the other really interesting thing in this game is that Adrian and I may have slightly different yeah, opinions on things. And that's how we operate <laughs> is that we like, you know, butt heads and debate things. And that's how our customers get the best uh, solutions. I'm so glad you said that because one of my questions is what kind of guidelines or like metrics do you use to decide what you put on? But I'm going to get to that as soon as we finish this game. So I'm interested now. I'm very interested to see. So what should we do? Should we have you answer at the same time or should we have you like kind of like consult with each other and then no no i won't edit my answer and, <laughs> and she has never been shy about sharing her opinion so i don't okay. think she'll worry about it one bit <laughs> all right let's go the first one you're gonna say either cheers for yeah that's a good product or fears for you have some hesitations okay here we go number one rawhide oh fears Buddy <laughs> <laughs> <Sweaty> pull fear <laughs> Tennis balls. Fear. Fears. Okay. Raw goat's milk. Cheers. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Cheers. Canned pet food. High quality. Cheers. Cheers. Awesome. Kibble. <sighs> Cheers. Because again, we carry it in our stores. It is an option that does meet some people where they are at. Yes. And we are always looking to boost the bowl. And sometimes we're boosting on top of that uh, dry kibble diet, which can be the foundation yeah, there's, for dogs. There's, that's a that's big both, question. maybe. That's 50-50, right? There's some fears and then definitely some cheers, right? Yes. Yeah. Shock collars. Fears. Fears. I share those fears with you. Commercial raw food. Cheers. 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 Catnip. Cheers. 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 What Age appropriate, of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No driving under the influence of catnip. Okay, cats. <laughs> CBD oil. Oh, cheers. 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 Retractable leashes. Fears. Fears. I share those fears. Anybody who follows me on social media knows that I am always talking about how much I dislike retractable leashes. So that's perfect. That's awesome. And I want you to tell me, because I know that you have this store for happy pets, but it's not just happy pets. It's happy in the right ways with the right products, with the right foods. So tell me about your values at your shops. Yeah. So, um, you know, like I said, we, our guarantee is that we don't have anything in our stores that we wouldn't feed or provide our own pets at home. So that makes our team feel very confident as well as our customers, because our customers, they tend to know us, right? So there's that trust factor there. But, you know, our main core values are that we really want to provide service above everything. And I know most stores say that, but that is true to us. Also, we're always improving. So whether that's our knowledge or our ability to serve our customers, you know, where they're at, the whole nine yards. we got a lot of... Uh ability to do that in the last year. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, ownership thinking, like we want our team to have that value of, you know, it's, it's their store and they're making the right decisions and helping our customers and also create fun experiences. You know, we are a fun store and also share our knowledge. I already kind of talked about how we'd like to educate our customers. So, you know, we say that we're in the business of providing fun and education. So you all have five locations. Is that right? Actually, we just opened up our sixth location about 
six weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Bravo. I know that uh, COVID has had an, a negative effect on a lot of pet industry businesses, but it sounds like yours did really well because you pivoted very quickly. How did you do that? Yeah, there was a lot to do in a short amount of time, but thanks to this guy here, uh, we were really set to make those changes very quickly. Well, and I think too, we had a lot of systems in place. Mm -hmm. We have a great team in place. We are not afraid of working hard. And so a lot of it was, was doing whatever needed to be done that day, have meetings with your team. So you know what they're experiencing, what they're feeling and making sure that we're providing not only a safe place for them, but a place where they feel you know, absolutely wonderful about what they're doing on a daily basis as well. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I know you guys went to online retail, you did pick up so that people didn't have to come into your stores. I mean, what other things did you have to just like implement so quickly just to like meet demand and not leave your pet parents hanging? Right. Really? Well, it, like Andy had said, you know, meetings with our team, we were doing every morning we were doing Zoom meetings with our team members, um, whoever felt like they needed uh, to give us some feedback because they were the ones face to face with what was happening at the stores. So, you know, we were listening to their feedback and then trying to very quickly turn th some things around. And again, it might be just some things that would make them feel, you right. know, more comfortable and confident with what we were doing. But we were considered an essential business. So because we're a, basically oh, a grocery right. store for dogs. Yes, exactly. Right? But the other part is that of that is the communication with our customers. So they knew what we were doing. They knew what safety measures we were putting into place. And also, so they knew that we were open and that we were there to help them and serve them. Yes. If we weren't doing that, then, you know, who's to say they wouldn't? maybe go somewhere else because they still needed products for their animals. Well, and this one here, she's a marketing genius. And so it was our 15 year anniversary last year. So it was an instant pivot. Adrian was doing almost like daily videos and she had all of these other things that she had set up and <laughs> communicated with customers. These are all the ways that we are available for you, whatever you're comfortable with, we'll meet you there. And ultimately our goal is improving the lives of pets and their people. We are going to continue to do that. However, we're able to do that. That's so we awesome. still try to celebrate, you know, and make sure that everyone could be a part of that 15 year celebration. So it was things like, you know, a treat of the month. So they would, every time they placed an order, whether it was in store or online, they got a free treat with that reminder that we are family owned, we're here for you. And hey, you know, thanks for helping us celebrate. Right, so yeah, right, it was right. a lot of kind of just, you know, making some tweaks and making sure that we could still do all those fun things like we're like we're known for. Yeah, you are known for that. I know that you have received various local and international awards, especially for your community building. And one of my questions for all of my guests is what their favorite pet related book or movie is. And I learned from your answer that you actually hosted a movie night for your favorite pet related movie. Yeah. So gosh, how long ago was this? So we always try to do fun things for our communities, right? And when The Secret Life of Pets first came out, we actually rented out an entire movie theater and we were able to show that to our customers as a premiere. Uh, as a premiere. So it was like <laughs> That's the night so was fun. So much fun. And we actually we sold out of the movie theater we rented out and had to get a bigger one mm -hmm. and sold out of that. Because you know what? It's a little, you know, at that point, it's like, oh, is this gonna go over well? Is this a good idea? Yeah. And you know, it's not inexpensive to rent that out. So, but it was really fun. And like I said, yeah, we we actually sold out twice. So it was a certain a set amount of money and half of that actually went to some local rescues so the other half went to pay for the theater so that is so cool i love that because you know what in the pet industry don't we don't get premieres we don't get to do fun things like that very rarely like we're always kind of like in casual clothes dealing with pets and covered in pet hair so i would love to one day have a, the opportunity to attend a premiere absolutely <laughs> it was that's so much awesome fun. next time you do that i'm flying to chicago all right sounds good <laughs> Awesome. So tell me about the experience of shopping at your stores. I've never been, but obviously I've, I've networked with you, Adrienne. So I know a little bit about your stores. What's the experience like? Like I walk into a small store, a big store. What does it look like? Well, of course, in our minds, it's the perfect size store, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> so it still feels comfortable and kind of homey, but also large enough to, to walk around. 
with the exception of one store, we have one store in like a downtown area yeah. where there's a lot of foot traffic. So it's a smaller footprint, but uh, most of our stores are about 3,000 square, uh, 3, square feet, but really the experience should be fun from the time actually, as you're walking up to the store, you know, from the parking lot, it should be inviting and fun. You open the doors, our colors are fun. Our products are fun. Our team members are fun. Typically you can see a fun smile on our team members' faces, but you know, now, <laughs> now hopefully the smile in their eyes. <laughs> it's hard. Um, That's still hard. I, I have a hard time with the smile in the eyes with the masks, but I understand the energy is good in there. The energy is good. And again, we've got such a great team, really. They, they have been absolutely amazing through this entire process. But, you know, building that rapport, right, and making sure that we're actually answering the real questions and making sure that we're we're providing that perfect purchase. Because sometimes people come in asking for shampoo because their dog smells, but really it's the diet that we need to be talking about. So you know, it's up to our team to make sure that they're digging a little bit and making sure that we're actually, you know, answering the, the right questions. Well, and Adrian went by this really quick, but the whole idea of a perfect purchase is a concept that we talk about with our team because mm -hmm. that is different in the eye of the beholder, okay? So it's different for each person who comes into our store. And so it's their job to figure out what that perfect purchase is for that specific person. Do you spell perfect with a P-U-R-R? -R? No. no. <laughs> well, that's good, well, that's good. <laughs> We might have to make that change. <laughs> I'm just, I was just curious because I was thinking that's the perfect title for this show, actually. <laughs> that is fun. Yeah. You know, the experience doesn't end there. It's, you know, every person who signs up for our Boston Bucks Club gets a handwritten thank you note. If they are maybe feeding a food where we think that there could be some improvement, they're going to get a postcard with an offer to try a, a bag of food that might improve the, the lives of their pets. Um, there might be a follow-up phone call come in and their pet has diarrhea, I can guarantee you we're going to be calling you in two or three days and making sure your, your pet is doing better. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I've never, I've shopped at many a smaller family owned pet boutique and I've never gotten a phone call follow-up. So bravo, well, because and, that's very special. Yes. And when we talk about it with our team, we would even say, how would you feel when you got that thank you note, when you got that phone call? And they're like, oh my God, it would just completely blow my mind. And I'm like, you can provide that experience for people. Right. And they're so jazzed to do things that we're all wired to want to do. Right. Anyway. So it sounds to me like basically you spend not only your time educating your clients, but your employees. What does your training program look like? Our training program is, is pretty thorough. They go through about 60 hours worth of training and education before they're put on our schedule as a team member. But then it, it continues from there with, you know, weekly tips of the weeks and monthly team meetings where we might have vendors coming in and sharing some of their knowledge. They have, you know, weekly one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with with their managers. And then, you know, we have coaching sessions with the managers, you know, as well. So, and it goes back to one of our core values of always be improving and our customers deserve that. Our team deserves it and our customers deserve it. For sure. Okay. So you have 3000 square feet. How many products, what types of products do you limit yourself? Like how, how do you choose what you want to <laughs> highlight in there? Who's she in charge buy, of that? wants to buy everything. Ah! Um, <laughs> Yeah. I don't blame you. I would be the same way. You know, we, we do a lot of a lot of planning and probably my my genius and ability in the business is that I do a lot with operations on the back end and looking at what is selling, what is not, what are customers voting on. You know, a retail store is not a museum. OK, we need to have things that are actually serving our customers. So we may think it's the best thing ever, but if our customers don't, then it's it's not worth having it in the store. So a lot of stuff. I don't even <laughs> think you count the number of SKUs. I, it's probably over 5,000, between five and yeah. 10,000, I would imagine. So we started this show on Wednesday nights during our shelter in place here in Chicago called What's New Wednesday? Because we know that part of the fun of coming to visit two Bostons in person is to see the new products. And, you know, our customers want that. So I thought, I don't want people to miss out on that. So every Wednesday we go live at 7 p.m. and we show the new products that have come in for the week. And we've continued that because it's it's fun for us and it's fun for our customers. 
And quite honestly, a lot of our team members watch it too. Yeah. Um, but I honestly didn't realize how many new products I brought in every week until we started doing the show on a regular <laughs> basis. Because that's one of my jobs is to kind of hunt for that new, those new products, those fun products. I do it, that's for sure. But I'm not necessarily good about discontinuing them. So that's where Got it comes in. <laughs> oh, I like that. That's why this is a team effort. I love it. So I'm going to have to take a break, but I'm going to dig in more into how you choose your products as soon as we come back from these messages from our sponsors. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There's no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Covered in pet hair. I'm your host, Isabel Alvarez Arada, and today I'm chatting with a couple of entrepreneurs who are supplying Chicagoans with the best pet products available. Basically, that's it. And I want to know, Adrian and Andy, to seen. I don't, I, I, it's spelled differently than it actually sounds. So I'm having to like think about it. But I want you guys to break it down as to how you choose your products because you're known for your quality. You're known for responsible sourcing, responsible companies. Your vendors are highly rated. What metrics, what guidelines do you use when engaging new vendors? Sure. So that it's a, that's a big question because there's so many different types of things to consider. Um, one being, what do our customers want? You know, what have they been voting on basically with their purchases? You know, do they want more shoes? Do they want more toys? new collar designs, that type of thing. And that's where Andy comes in because he kind of creates this, you know, we look at our turn rates. We look at our, our budget for each specific category. And then when we need new products, you know, we're searching for them. Actually, I'm searching for them all the time. And then, you know, when, when a new product comes out from a vendor who we already have a great relationship with, that's obviously a pretty easy decision to make. We still have to look at the ingredients and, you know, different things like that, because, you know, with the whole DCM thing that has happened over the last year, yes. some of our vendors have gone to creating food with some grains in it that we might not normally carry. So we have to do, I guess, our due diligence, making sure that we're looking at everything very, very closely. As far as new vendors go, you know, we're looking at, you know, what is their reputation? What has our experience been with them? You know, are they respectful? Do they try to manufacture in the U.S.? Obviously everything edible, you know, but if we're talking about toys or different things like that, you know, what else? How, how can we, the big thing is, is that you had mentioned this earlier that we are in, in the kind of the middle between the customers and the manufacturers and things like that. How do we get it? Are we able to get it? Mm -hmm. If we are really going to promote this line to pet parents, are we going to be able to get it back in? Yeah. And so good service is making sure that we're able to not only educate, but then also have supply and be able to have it there for people. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, those are a few of the factors that we would look at. You know, we have a few things that I would say are probably like red lines. Like we just, for example, we mentioned earlier, we don't carry any retractable leashes, even though they, some people will say that certain ones are safer. They don't teach boundaries. They can be dangerous. Da, 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 da. And at night, we want to go to bed, not wondering if something that we sold is going to cause a problem for someone. Right. Um, and so there are a few things like that, that I would say are like complete red lines. Yes. Um, but when we're, we're looking at products, we're looking at how it fits into our current mix and what our customers are wanting. But also things like CBD, for example, there are so many different CBD lines out there. So many. Right. Well, we don't want to be carrying so many lines. We want to be able to choose the best ones and then feel confident that that's what we're providing for our customers. So we're going yes. to be doing research on, you know, where is it grown? How is it grown? 
will they show us, you know, all of the testing, different things like that. So yeah, it's, it's a lot to kind of think through for each, each decision. Being so made. which one of you is the researcher on all the things? Is it a shared task or is one of you like the pet food expert, the supplement expert, the researcher? Yeah. No, I think that that both of us definitely do our our research. You know, something big like a pet food line or a CBD CBD line, I would meet with the the vendor, but I would never make that decision on my own. I can make my decision the decisions on my own on a lot of other things. You know, right. toys, collars, all that stuff. I don't really bring him into the mix because he's got so many other things to do. Right. But when it's a big big decision like something like a a food line, or then I'll definitely bring him in and and kind of. Make sure that we're both we both yeah. feel comfortable, or even present it to our team. I was going to say that yeah. that it's ultimately our team that is going to be presenting on a day to day basis. Yeah. And so, yeah. if they are extremely excited about a particular line, even though we might feel like it might be a little me too, if they are excited about it and they are going to passionately talk about it, they're going to end up getting it in more hands of pet owners, improve right. pets' lives. That's what we're all about, and so that's yeah. what we. Really it makes for. sense to get the employee buy-in. So this brings me to our second game today. It's called If They Only Knew. And so I'm sure that you have learned so many things in all of your research. And I'm sure that you have some opinions on what pet parents don't know that they probably should know about certain products before they go out and purchase them. Okay. So I know some of these are big topics. So you can just tell me kind of like the top thing you wish pet parents knew. First one, pet food. If they only knew. Oh my. If they only knew that all pets should have some fresh food in their diet. Yeah. Beautiful. Very succinct. I love it. Treats. If they only knew. If they only knew that the quality of treats they provide on a daily or hourly basis in some cases really did have an impact on their pet's health. That's so true. People think, eh, I just give one or two a day. But if it's, you know, a little bit of poison, it's still a little bit of poison twice a day. Here's the rule that everyone should follow. If you open up the container and it smells like chemicals, throw it in the trash. Ooh, okay, good to know. Enrichment toys, if they only knew. Ooh, if they only knew that this could improve your pet's behavior mm -hmm. and, and solve a lot of problems. I love it. This is not something that you sell, but I'm sure it comes up in conversations a lot and you just alluded to it just now. Dog training, if they only knew. It could improve the lives of both your pets and your family. Absolutely. If they only knew collars. Collars should only be used for identification purposes and fun. <laughs> You just said that. That has always been my thing. I'm like, collars serve one purpose, to display the ID tag. Do not use it for anything else. And actually, if it has a bow tie or a festive like holiday theme, that's great. But it's not supposed to connect to your leash. Exactly. Yay! I'm so excited. I seriously have goosebumps. I, I've never heard a pet pro say that. I don't feel like people speak out on that enough. Mm -hmm. And I think we could save so many dogs from getting hit by cars if people knew that it's not meant to connect to the leash. Or a tie out. Not that a tie out should be. Oh my gosh. Used, but yes. True, 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 true. That leads me to if they only knew leashes. A retractable leash actually teaches your dog to pull. Ooh, that I did not know. I ha I dislike them for many reasons, but that was not one of them. I have added that to my list now. Also add a retractable leash on a prong collar to <gasps> list no notes. Or, or a no pull harness. Right. Do not use a retractable leash with any no pull harness because Correct. it's so confusing for the dog. It makes no sense. Correct. <laughs> Let's add it. I'm just going to add it because you brought up two of two things. Prong and choke collars if they only knew. Well, I kind of want to say if they only knew how to use them properly because we do not sell them because the vast majority of, of individuals don't know how to use and them. They could be misused. And most of the they time, are they often are. time, right? They are often now, times are. I'm right. not saying that there's never a situation for something. I mean, very, very, very infrequently, but most people will never, ever use them correctly. Correct. I remember I was, I worked with a trainer ages ago before I knew better who put a choke collar on my dog. And then he showed me like it had to be a P, not a D or whatever before you thread it. Yes. 
I definitely forgot that. I definitely was not using it properly. At some point, working with the same trainer, she desensitized to the corrections. And then we went to a very small prong collar and then she desensitized to that. And then we had to go to the bigger prong collar. And I remember saying to the trainer, I was like, I'm very petite. She's a big dog. Mm -hmm. I just don't feel like I can correct the way you're correcting. I try my hardest. And again, like you said at the beginning of the show, every pet parent, including myself at that time, had all the best of intentions. I was doing what I thought was the best thing because this dog trainer who was certified and experienced and highly recommended told me it was the best thing, but I could tell that I wasn't doing it the way he was doing it. And it wasn't being, it wasn't an effective option for me. Yes, absolutely. And I have to say this too, that no brachiocephalic dogs, any of the smushed in face dogs should ever be on a choke chain or anything like that because the damage that can be done to the trachea is so significant. That is excellent advice. Thank you so much for adding that. Last one. If they only knew, no pull harnesses are amazing. (laughs) Uh, We actually do harness fittings on a daily basis. And a couple times every spring, we make it a point to like have a a vet where we say, hey, we're, we're providing these harness fittings because no pull harnesses can improve the the lives of pets and their people so much because it can make walks actually enjoyable. 100%. So you go on more of them. We actually will have people come in and we go, okay, now go take them for a walk. Yes. Now one guy showed up about six hours later. We were a little, we were wondering whether he was going to come back or not. (laughs) Because he had ended up going to the pub with his dog (laughs) and he came back in and bought his harness. So yeah, it all works out. (laughs) That's the best story. That's totally me in the future. That's going to be me one day. That is awesome. So have you ever stocked anything in your stores? How long ago did you open your first store? We're celebrating our 16, 16th anniversary. That's right. You already mentioned that. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's fine. So I want to know if in that time you have ever had to pull something off of your shelves because you either changed your mind about it. There was a recall. Does that happen even with the best due diligence? Yeah. You know, what comes to mind um, is years ago, our best selling treat and quite honestly, one of our best selling products just in general, it was this really perfect size and perfect consistency for a training treat. And we would just sell a ton of them. Well, they got bought out. The company was purchased by a parent company who we didn't really believe in. We didn't feel comfortable with that parent company. So even though they promised us that the ingredients wouldn't change, you know, so on and so forth, we actually decided to just discontinue that whole line immediately. We sold what we had because we knew that that was an okay product. But in my mind, we could not in in good faith, like monetarily support that parent company because they actually made products that in our opinion were harmful to pets. Oh my gosh, I love it. And then that happened also with the canned food line, our our best selling canned food line. Same thing happened. So we then we had to discontinue that. So it's happened a few times. Yeah. That is awesome, though, that you're up to speed and that you're maintaining your values. And I bet it happens a lot with these newer, very high quality pet food brands. Once they are so successful, I'm sure they are oftentimes acquired by bigger companies where it becomes a matter of, is this even going to be what it used to be? Can I support the parent company? Company. I mean, does that happen as much as I imagine it does? Yes, because that is that is ultimately a lot of the innovation and in best pet brands in the pet industry are in the independent channel. And they're being talked about because they require a one-on-one conversation, communication about why you would want to spend a little bit extra, look at these ingredients and what differences those will make in your pet. So as independents, we know that we are going to build brands that will eventually go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. That's, that is what we do. And it's our responsibility to keep finding those best products for our customers and just know some of our old favorites will eventually not, not be available to us because of either a conflict of interest in what, you know, we believe with the corporate values of someone else, or just will become unavailable, you know, in our distribution. And on the other side of the coin, I'm sure sometimes there are tiny, small, great, wonderful brands that maybe can't keep up with the inventory that you need. Does that happen? That has happened. Actually, with our favorite no pull harness, that happened. And you know what, though? We, she started buying more machines and started you know, hiring more individuals to try to keep up with not only our demand, but you know, other yeah. 
counts, but yeah, it has happened before for sure. Yeah, I guess there has to be like that perfect kind of balance between right. big enough to supply your customer base and small enough to still meet your expectations from the company for sure. An interesting situation because we do try to find those unique, you know, one-off products that do come from smaller vendors, but it's a conversation to have up front. Like this is how many we would expect to sell. What's your comfort level with that? And sometimes they say, I can't do it. And, we're, and we say, okay, let us know when things change. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Awesome. All right. So does, uh, does your store have anything that it doesn't carry currently that you kind of want to add at this point? Is there something that's trending that you haven't really brought in that you're kind of thinking about? Really nothing that comes to mind. So no. you guys have every, so let's go to the next question. What yeah. is your favorite pet product that you carry? Can you even, even if you have to break it down to categories? Okay. What's your favorite? I think my favorite toy is Beamer's favorite toy because he, j he plays with it every day and it's, it's called the polar it's two purple rings and he just plays with it nonstop. It's a great way to try to wear out high energy hyper dogs because you can throw one and as they're bringing it back, you can throw the other. So they're like constantly moving. Oh, well, nice. and instead of playing fetch, you're playing chase. So the yeah. dog is actually chasing after this because it moves along the ground and so it lets them hunt mm -hmm. and so it's yeah wonderful that yeah. way too i think my favorite supplement is well we've got a lot of really great cbd supplements that can help in so many different ways whether that's anxiety or just building up a great immune system but something i think that every pet parent should have in their pantry is something called perfect form and it's a combination of organic pumpkin seed and slippery elm. There's like five different really great um, digestive ingredients in there. And so if your dog is constipated or has soft ser serve poops, yep. because that's, that's an issue. If your dog has soft serve poops, um, sprinkle a little bit of this right on their food and it helps take care of that issue. Yeah. And slippery elms known to help with gas too. So those yes. stinky boxers who are farting up a storm. <laughs> But yeah. And I think when I'm on the floor, I'm always looking at fresh food. You know, mm -hmm. what can I do for fresh food? You've got a small dog. Uh, we're going to be looking at primarily doing fresh food options with yes. you. You've got a really big dog. You know, hey, let's talk about what you can do to improve that. Yeah. And even if it's just a topper, you know, to, to boost that bowl. Again, what Andy had said earlier, we really truly believe that 100% of dogs and cats should have fresh food in their diet, even if it's not 100% of the time but they should always have a, at least a bit of it. I would also say for our cat owners, boxy cat litter. Oh yeah, that's good. Stuff. It is amazing because it's got actually probiotics in it mm -hmm. and it's a clumping litter, but it clumps on the top, on yeah. the top surface. So you don't end up, you use a, end up using less litter. You have a cleaner box, happier cat. Win. And you use less of it as yeah. well. Win, win, win. That is so cool. Uh, you know what? We need to get the name out because I feel like litter boxes and the lit litter box smell keep a lot of people from adopting cats. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, it's called Boxy Cat. Yeah. And actually, our cat box is in a room right off the front entry to our house. There is no cat box odor with the Boxy Cat. And it's amazing. Yeah. That is so awesome. That's a great tip. And I want to go back really quickly to tennis balls. You said fetch. You said that in your in the game that you had fear about tennis balls. Most people don't know why. Would you mind explaining? There's a couple reasons. First of all, the material is very abrasive on the teeth, so it can wear the teeth down and cause a lot of dental issues. The other thing is if they're chewing on that fuzz, they can swallow the fuzz and it can cause impactions, which can obviously lead to costly you know, vet bills and honestly, even death. Bigger dogs, they could puncture it and they could actually end up swallowing part of the tennis ball. It just is They're not, pressurized. yeah, they <laughs> pressurized. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing good about it. And again, when you open that tennis ball canister, what do you smell? You smell chemicals, right? Chemicals. It's not a dog toy. I think, no. I think you're going to say this better than me, but we need to give our dogs, dog toys, our cats, cat toys, our children, children toys. Like I've seen people in my buy nothing group be like this beanie baby would be a great dog toy. No, it's not a dog toy. It could cause a huge problem. Please don't give this to your dog. So everybody who's listening, please make sure that your toys are intended for the species that you have at home. Absolutely. There are so many other options that are the same size, the same look as tennis balls, but we don't even care. You know, there are dog safe tennis balls. I say that in air quotes because right. 
I just think that that's a line that we don't even want to get close to. So we just decide not to carry anything that resembles a, a real tennis ball because we we want to make sure that that message is out there. We just yeah. don't do that. That's a great tip. Okay. So I could ask you questions about product all day, but I'm not going to. So tell us how can those in the Chicago area find you and those that are not in the Chicago area, how can they learn through all that you offer on social media and online? Absolutely. So anyone can order from twobostons.com. We ship nationwide. Anyone in the Chicago and area, you can go to twobostons.com and it lists all of our locations. Right now we've got two in Naperville, one in Geneva, one in Glen Ellen, one in Wheaton, and one in Burr Ridge. Just to be educated and to learn. Um, like I said, we're, we're constantly doing our What's New Wednesday show on Wednesday nights. That's live on Facebook or through our app at Two Bostons. We are posting, we constantly post blogs weekly uh, that you can find right on our website. And we do post those on our Facebook page, Two Bostons Boutique. Yeah. And I would say too, if you're in the Chicago land area, we've got next day delivery. That's an available option as well as curbside. But come, we would love to have you in the store as well. And so, yeah, make us a trip. That is awesome. I really look forward to one day making the trip and attending the premiere and checking out your store. So thank you so much, both of you, for taking the time to chat with me today and share this undrinkable drink with me. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> And for good luck, you have to drink. So I'm going to drink. All right. <laughs> I also want to propose a toast to my executive producer, Mark Winter, for making this show possible. To our viewers on YouTube and our listeners on Pet Life Radio, thank you for joining us and spending your time with us. Here's to a life covered in pet hair because there's no better way to live. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> To learn more about Covered in Pet Hair, please visit CoveredInPetHair.com or PetLifeRadio.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.